sweet confidant, my confidant. I gave you a spicy one because I'm recording on Friday with one of my favorite fucking people. You guys have not stopped <laughs> asking me and bothering me. Not bothering you. Never bothering me. You guys have been requesting a host throughout history with the one and only Jasmine Robbins for literally since we did the last one. And you guys, we got her. She's here. Yes! Hi, Jazz. Welcome Hello. back to the pod. I'm so happy to be here. When I received I this email, I was like, oh. please, please. Anything I get to do with Jazz is a fucking bright ray of sunshine on my day. It's I'm just obsessed. Fun. How are you? Tell, give the confidants an update. I'm sure all of them are already following you on social media, but what you been up to? Honestly, um, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Things have been shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Not, not shit. Often. But um, well, yeah. mentally, things have been mm. shit. It's been like a ride, you know, and mm. trying to find the light in things while so much is going on in the world. Oof. Yeah, yeah. It's just kind of hitting me in an off way, but I'm I'm yeah. mostly okay. Um yeah, I think yeah, I think sure. the the biggest thing that I'm doing is like allowing myself to feel like shit. Amen. Yes. It's a collective like do days feel longer and slower to you or do they feel faster? It's like a mix. Like um Yeah. It feels fast when i look at the clock and i'm like oh my gosh it's all it's already one nighttime yeah. <laughs> right and then i feel like from four until midnight is like a whole week i'm like it takes me forever <laughs> yeah, so, it, yeah it's like i'm feeling that push and pull of time it being the new year like is everyone actually doing anything yet again mm -hmm. omicron came up popped its head up and it's like it does make i said this offline but it does make me feel better that other people like people I love and, <laughs> and connect with also feel that way. <laughs> truly, truly. Yes. Yeah. Well, hopefully we can brighten your spirits a little bit. We know that this is the confidant's favorite segment. This is the favorite format. I'm still a huge proponent of getting hosts throughout history on television somehow. I don't know who we I need to call know. it HBO Max, but it seems like I, a perfect fit to me. I'm like, Gotta it's get my been long enough. That. We have enough proof of concept. Truly. And the confidants love it. They really um, do. But you guys know how this works. I have researched a famous hoe throughout our historic times. I have recounted the tale to Jasmine here. We react. We learn. It's fun. It's flirty. And it's super hoey. So let's dive right in, shall we? I'm so excited. I, I've also missed this because, like, you legit taught me things. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I'm excited to Genuinely, learn. Genuinely, me too. <laughs> Deadass, this one especially, because, like, you'll see why, but this was one. And I wonder if you know anything about this one, because this is Ooh. kind of a famous, more well-known oh. throughout history okay. that I have avoided learning about, because I'm just like, who fucking cares about white monarchy? Uh, but then I'm like, this is interesting. Okay. This is the tale of Anne Boylan. Wait, why does, Bolin. why does that name and sound familiar? Exactly. Egg mother back. Exactly. Okay. So we're covering someone whose name I've heard many times over, but truly thought she was just like a boring ass white lady whose name is the one you just read over history books over and over again. But you know what they say behind every powerful man is an even more powerful woman. Mm. But my first question before I get too deep into it is like, do we still feel like that's true anymore? Or is that such an outdated saying? Or are we still holding and on to that ideal? Every powerful man is a powerful woman. An even more powerful woman. And even like more women powerful are Okay, so I don't think it means the same thing. When I hear that, I think like if there's a powerful man, he's mm. probably an asshole. And he's probably an <laughs> asshole because he didn't connect with his mom. Oh, <laughs> True, who was though. ultimately more powerful than he would ever be. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help but see in my mind those guys from... Have you been watching this drama with the Fresh and Fit podcast? No. Oh, Wait, my God. These yes. Two, yes. Those fucking assholes. Fucking guy. I just am like, can we get their mothers on the phone? Can someone call their moms? Like, I feel like that would end all of this nonsense. 
You know what? I this is going to be off brand for me to say, but <laughs> you can't be looking like that saying that shit about other people. <laughs> you really can't. Facts. It's true. You don't you don't get to look like that and dare cast he judgment. There is no power to be held there. None. Like he talks so much for such a little man. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what it is. He's a Pomeranian. But not even cute. Truly. No, I want someone to say you're a Pomeranian straight to his face. <laughs> Get us on that podcast and we'll Literally, them. You are a Pomeranian. Anyways, I diverted. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, back in. We're diving into the true hoiness of Anne Bolin. I don't know if it's Boylan or Bolin, so we're going to go with Bolin, mm. who was married to one of the most powerful men in the world, King Henry the eighth. Oh, okay. And like, I can't keep King Henry the eighth apart from King Henry the first. Why do I care about them? They're all dead anyways. Right. But this is, Im this is important because she's a hoe. Uh, it was said that Anne growing up had the most desirable traits as a mistress, but not as a wife. So huh. we're literally telling the OG tale of turning a hoe into a housewife. Right, right, right. Yeah. Nobody uh, wanted to claim her. No one wanted to claim her. Mm -hmm. And you'll you'll hear why. We'll, we'll see. Oh. Uh, I, I wasn't totally wrong, though, to say that she kind of just seems like a vanilla ethereal figure in my mind of the history books. Because this is how people described her as a youth. Plain, solo, but captivating and charismatic. And according to one writer, it said that she had six fingers on one hand. And oh. I've never... No one's ever pointed that out before. But her personality was intelligent witting and cunning and she was once reported to have spoken to her uncle in words that shouldn't even be used on a dog and that her personality got her far enough you know to marry the most powerful man hmm. in england of the time but you know what's that well, second word that you said when you described her s plain solo what's that Fuck if I know. It was I, in the Wikipedia. Oh. <laughs> I feel Let's look like it up. this is Solo. like a classic story of someone who maybe wasn't the societal view of pretty. And that's know. why there's so much mention of her personality. Like, she wasn't the yeah. cutest one to look. I mean, I feel like that's in all the movies. Like, not the cute one, but oh, her personality's glowing. She's so funny. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay, I just looked up solo means of complexion, unhealthy yellow or pale brown color. What? <laughs> so she had a funky she had jaundice? <laughs> <laughs> what? They had a whole ass word for this. Wow. I think they're calling her an uggo, like fully. Truly. They're just, like they're nicely using these like fancy words to be like, she was an uggo with a great personality, but how do we know she wouldn't be like the hottest bitch right of these days? Exactly. You know? Okay, but we got to rewind a little bit, right? Okay, so we don't exactly know when Anne's birthday was. It was estimated between to be between 1501 and 1507. She came from like a decently wealthy family, nothing of, of royalty, but her dad did become a French court member at some point when she was young that gave her a taste of that life, you know, like she was kind of watching from the windows like, ooh, I see my parents are kind of involved in this society mm -hmm. and I want to be where the money is. Yes. So when her dad became a court member, he got her a job as a lady in waiting to this family that he was working for. So is she was like tying a... up the what does that mean it's like um tying up the corsets oh you're a personal assistant okay okay to wait for it she was the lady in waiting for the most fashionable court Ooh. in all of europe of queen mary so wow. that's like working for jasmine as an intern is how i see it <laughs> i'm loving that what a dream like job she was she was the original LC. <laughs> that is such a reference. I <laughs> hope you all understood that or else you're yeah. too young to be listening to this. Yeah. <laughs> so she learned everything becoming a lady in waiting. She got to be around celebrities like Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> and she learned like the, ma I know, I don't know why that was. I thought it. you were going to say DiCaprio. <laughs> Man, we are in the 1500s. <laughs> 
<laughs> Back it up. Long live. Um, yeah. She she learned her manners being there, right? Because she, mm-hmm. she didn't know how to, like, sip the teacup. And uh, she liked she, – the, the good side was that she got to be a part of this society and culture. But there was a more sinister side to working for such a prominent queen is that she got mm-hmm. to see behind the curtain and the tea of what it was like to be a queen. Yeah. And – the woman she worked for's husband had eight babies by his mistress in seven years. So she got what? to see my boss's husband's side piece having all his babies. And she, for the first time, got to be like, okay, so we're all just going to not say anything. <laughs> and we're all just going to accept this as normal. And hmm. okay, the math doesn't math, but. Yeah, no. She got a taste of what that life was like early on. Okay. So it does make me take pause to remember how indispensable or how dispensable women were in this time frame. Mm-hmm. Like, God forbid you have something like a yeast infection or endometriosis or like couldn't bear a son. You were literally just like a woman to hold a title to stand yeah. next to. Yeah. Ew. Man. Yeah, that's really Always shitty. Gross. And this was a fun fact. It was also considered unlucky to have sex with your pregnant wife in royal times. Unlucky, like for the child that comes out or just I in think general? Just unlucky. It's like stepping on a crack, break your mama's back situation. <laughs> and it made me pose the question, Jazz, does the idea of having sex while pregnant gross you out at all? Um, no. Mm-mm. I don't think so either. Yeah. Do you want to be pregnant? Oh, that is such a question. I don't for the, I, I know I don't really want to have kids, but I wouldn't mind knowing what it was like to be pregnant, but like for a day. Okay. Okay. You did that whole series recently, right? Where yes. you were the baby belly and everything. Mm-hmm. And did that change your mind at all? Yeah. And? I'm like, I would have a child now. <gasps> you loved it. I really did. Jasmine, are you going to have a baby right now? Not right now, but my plan this year is to go to a, like, fertility clinic and see, like, if I Uh, even can. Because um, on my mom's side, there's a lot of, like, Mm, a lot of problems problems. in that area. So Same with my my mom's side. So I did that last year or two years ago, and it was the same thing. They were just like, go check. You got a lot. You're good. You don't need to ice them yet. Mm -hmm. But it's Mm -hmm. good to know. Yeah, Here's your reminder to go get your pap smears. (laughs) Okay. So back to our girl, Anne. So now we're in her like late teens, early 20s, and she's just absolutely peaking at this Mm -hmm. time because she has got this like real college freshman energy at this like royal family court and culture. She completed her studies of French. She was super uh, well-versed in the arts and fashion, literature, music, poetry, philosophy. But most importantly, this is when she starts fucking and not just fucking she's fucking like crazy right really it is of the culture she's at all these parties these galas and it was reported people either say she was like a complete prude or a complete hoe in that she was around all of this and she started to like pick up tips on like this is how you please a person this Mm -hmm. is how you do the sex thing. And it reminds me a lot of like Bridgerton where they didn't teach them anything about sex. Yes. I'm into it. Honestly, like go off. If no one's going to teach yeah. you, then figure it out. How are you going to learn? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she's having like the time of her life. And then she gets recalled to go marry her cousin, which oh. like gross. And yeah. this marriage was intet- intended to settle a family dispute over titles but here's what saved her. Anne's father died. Oh. And that left her her and her sister as co heiresses. But like thank God her dad died because then that made the family dispute their titleship. And they were like, Okay, you don't have to marry your cousin James. You can you can go back to your life. So she like I love poof, that. escaped it. Well, yeah, I, so I'm like, sad her dad died. Yeah, but like thanks like thanks, Dad, right? Right. Thanks for, for providing some some good out of your death, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yay. And it's like, I can go back out into the real world and hoe out. But then things start to get a little messy. 
So Anne had an older sister, the one that she became co-heiress with, who did have to get married to some guy. She was forced to get married to this dude. But this is where Mr. King Henry VIII comes into play. Okay. And you're thinking like, oh, is this where their meet cute is at like the sister's wedding? No, no, no. Henry VIII was in attendance of the wedding, but he did not fall for Anne at that moment. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. He had his eyes set. On Anne's sister, the bride of the day, the bride. Oh, he started to say, work out. "I want that." Right? He's king. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. He just oh, goes to his wedding and is right. like, "That bride's hot. I want to smash." Right? Mm-hmm. So, right after her big sister gets married, her big sister becomes a mistress of the king. Like, sit, like literally, sis. And this is kind of important because literally. Anne. <laughs> Gets a front row seat now to see the inner workings of this very important king guy. Like, oh. she kind of gets to see, again, she's a she's a, she's a a lurker, right? Mm-hmm, First she was mm-hmm. in the culture and society, and now she's like, okay, I see my sister doing these things with this guy. Damn. I'm keep an eye on that. Yeah. So, Wait. then Anne joined, what? Isn't it interesting how, like having multiple partners was just so common and it's not like it was a huge secret yeah it was kind of known but you know this all was not accepted there Mm -hmm. was no like poly lifestyle because everything was still ruled by the church in these times Mm -hmm. and the bible was like (laughs) absolutely not Yeah, that's really interesting to me. Isn't it? It was always a little bit open. Uh Uh-huh. At least for the man. I'll say that. Yeah. So, Anne then joins this court thingy because she's hanging out with her sister and Henry and she's around Henry's court and she decides, I'm going to join this court and be a part of this society. Uh, And she's going to all these parties. And again, she's still fucking like crazy. And she's taking notes about this Henry guy on the side. And she was even in this like saucy romance with a pal of Henry's. But the guy who's the saucy romance she was with, the guy's father wouldn't allow them to be married because he said Anne was too much of a hoe. (gasps) So she literally like tried to put herself out there and got the feedback real quick and was like, okay. I see how society works here. Right. Meanwhile, my married sister is effing this dude. The king! Right? So, a Ugh. little note about old Henry here at this time. Mm-hmm. Like I said, English England had been going through religious and political turmoil for super long. And our boy Henry really needed to produce a male heir which his wife at the time, Catherine, the queen, had failed, and I'm making air quotes, it failed to produce him a son. Which, like, guys, why Whose are we blaming that? Women? Whose fault is that? We'll get into that a little Mm-mm. deeper. But here's something fun to know about Henry, is that his queen, Catherine, was his brother's widow. So he oh. married his brother's widow in order to become king wow yeah and they were like that's what we have to do in order to keep this family to keep going let's not say anything about it let's just keep moving on and then he starts porking his brother's sister and or brother's wife and sorry you know that's what i assume men back then assumed what it was called like i'm porking this this uh chambermaid i'm porking the chambermaid (laughs) Trying to get into the lingo. Okay, so that's important to know because beyond him have done that to to get to the throne, he was also generally known to be a player all the time and case in point, fucking Anne's sister. Married sister. Woo, okay. So now that we know who all the players are, Mm -hmm. literally, Henry sees Anne at these court events that she's attending, and he starts to get a little crush on her. Okay. And so he starts to send her little gifts. 
Most notably, one of the most prized possessions in this museum, apparently, that's left over, was a gold whistle that was kind of like a Swiss army knife, and it had a gold pick and an, a gold earwax scooper on it. How would you, you feel know, if a man gave you that? <laughs> to be honest, I would be quite pleased because I'm like... <laughs> I don't need no flowers. I don't need no like <laughs> swan made out of gold. Give me a gold Q-tip. That's what <laughs> That's I want. That's useful. That's it's what I want. Sustainable, mm-hmm. reusable. Okay. It's bougie. We'll, we'll it's practical. It. <laughs> she can carry it around in her pocket, and people, right. the girls are like, oh, "Where did you get that?" And she's like, "Don't worry about it." <laughs> mm-hmm. I like it. Okay, so he straight up starts sugar daddying her, but then. <laughs> makes her feel even more special because he starts to write these amazingly beautiful love letters that Ooh. are now even kept in like the Vatican library. Uh, we'll get to why they're there, but um, he started writing these like really romantic letters, like showing real romance, which back okay. then was super unheard of because you really married for royalty and business deals. But for him to have been writing these letters, it was a big deal. And Mm -hmm. that's why historians say, like, this was proof that he was really falling in love with her. Damn. However, our girl Anne is not easily convinced. She's like, that's cute. You have a crush on me, but I'm not going to just fall in love with you. Mm -hmm. Because remember, I liked this guy whose dad said I was too much of a hoe to marry him. I'm not about to fall into the same trap with you. I'm not going to be your mistress. I'm going to be your wife or I'm going to be nothing. Nothing. So she basically was like, I'm not going to respond to these cute little love letters until you put your money where your mouth is, essentially. I love that. Or like your marriage where your mouth is. Yes. Yeah. And I thought this was a fun fact. Uh, In the letters, he often referred to ducks, which was Tudor slang word for boobies. So he'd often write in his letters like, I I can't wait to cuddle your ducks. (laughs) Wait, I'm kind of into that. (laughs) You know what? My cute. My cousin, when she was a little child, um, she would refer to like the men's balls and penis as their chickens. <laughs> <laughs> it's very like gobbly, like a turkey yeah, neck. Yeah, yeah. So she was like, oh, he got he got kicked in the chickens. <laughs> <gasps> That's so cute. I know. And then now so, boobies are ducks. Ducks. I'm kind of into it. I, yeah, I think it's kind of cute. And I also think it's like a funny way to hide the fact that he's like, I'm going to titty fuck you later. <laughs> it's also like how are you i i understand having like a code word but yeah how are you making sense of saying mm. ducks for boobs like i can't wait to cuddle your ducks like i can't wait to swim with the ducks like what are you what are you yeah, saying I, to make it make sense I, yeah i i feel like it must have been a like an inside joke between them yeah yeah that's the only way i could understand it yeah she sense. would it would have to be very clear <laughs> yeah <laughs> but he was quite the romance writer right and even at one point Anne caught what was called the sweating sickness which i think was a just basically like a fever till you died but it oh. was said that henry kept writing her letters of love to show he he doesn't just want to dispose her. He wants her to fight through this illness and, and stay alive. And that's what kept her alive. Because remember, very, women were very dispensable. Like if they caught the fever or whatever and shit. And he was like, stay alive. Jeez. Little Hamilton. She reference. was just PMSing. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, like prove it. Like we all get it. <laughs> yeah. So, remember, all of this is happening while he's still very much married to Queen Catherine, our girl Kat over there. Yeah. And he's like, I want to propose to Anne, but I'm still married to this. I'm using what I think it would be his language. I'm still married to this bitch that can't produce a boy for me. Mm -hmm. So what am I supposed to do? And he basically is like, all right, we're under the reign of Catholic religion the church and state have not yet been separated not even the same country (laughs) i could say that the proof is in the 
in the pudding that because Catherine can't produce me a male heir, God must not want me to be married to her anymore. So Mm. I should be allowed to try with someone else. And this is a very big deal because this is the, no king had ever divorced a queen before. Like really? at this point. Yes. Okay. So it makes you wonder, like, because Anne is starting to play the game of like, I'm not going to just be a whore. I want to be your wife. It, are we, are we calling her a homewrecker at all? Hmm. Or is Henry in her ear like, we never sleep together. She hates me. I hate her. I love you and only you. Mm. Uh, I know. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And. Yes. It's complicated. Y- yes. Yes. Yeah. I don't okay. think it's I, I think there are some home wrecking tendencies. Um mm-hmm. but I don't believe it is solely on her or her fault. I love that. You you have some real home wrecking traits, but mm-hmm. I don't think you're a home wreck. I'm gonna start saying that to some of my friends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he did propose to her while still married to Queen Cat, and Anne did accept. So now, she was if like, "If anything, <laughs> the problem is that this man thought that he deserved two wives. <laughs> That's the He's problem. Like, I'm the king. Why? Yes, yes. Not? It's not yeah. her home wrecking tendencies. It is yes. this man thinking he needs to have." Just like it's this Pulling man thinking bitches. that women are disposable. There you go. Because so, if it was open communication and it was an open marriage, lovely. Yeah, yeah. But it's not. He, she'd be like, whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. but Anne's like, I'm not going to be the mistress. I'm, I want to be the queen. So then it gets a little nasty because Queen Cat won't go, and he can't get a divorce because like that's literally never happened before. And he's like, how mm-hmm. do I do this? And he he had a play be put on at the castle with everyone in attendance where he basically had the story of what was happening performed as a play where he the the line said that he needed the king needed a new tighter moon to replace his current old leaky moon. <laughs> First so of he all, the narcissism <laughs> in making people watch your life moon. story. <laughs> right. And then also, how fucking dare you? Truly. Like, keep your matters. You know, you don't got to air out your dirty laundry at the school play. That's mm-hmm. just... You're yeah. taking low blows here, right? Yeah. So, at this point, when I'm reading this, in my mind, I'm like, okay... Anne has to be doing this for a power play, right? Like, mm-hmm. there's no point. There's, I can't imagine a world in which she's, like, watching this guy tear his current wife down and is okay with it. Like, unless she's power hungry enough to be queen where she's like, I have to put my fem- intersectional feminism over, uh, aside and mm-hmm. allow this guy to happen not to mention i've seen my own sister fuck this man i know that he's kind of a scumbag right 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 or do you do you think it like can love be blind in that instance it doesn't seem like it's totally just on the basis of love especially like thinking about her not being quote unquote the prettiest um, mm-hmm. and everything like that. So wanting that desire to be desired. Um, mm. and then her, um, being so close to the inside group, but not being yeah. on the inside, it seems mm. like there's some other motives going on. Yes. Okay. I, I agree too at this point. So to get a divorce, he basically had to go to the church and all the other people that are in the court system and get all these signatures on a document. But there was one guy who apparently was like, hell no, we can't do this. This is going to start like a huge revolution. Kings are going to be getting divorced left and right. 
And plus in the Bible, it says you're supposed to be married to a man and a woman and that's it. Apparently they forged this man's signature who wouldn't sign Ooh. the divorce papers and then beheaded him. <gasps> and he was just like, I'm the king. If you don't agree off with your head, wow. someone sign his signature. Yes. But then the Pope steps in and mm. the Pope was like, no, I block your divorce scripture over authority, even though that's gross. He was trying to, you know, he was trying to get some, uh, some revenge for his homie who just got his head chopped off mm -hmm. for standing up for the church. But serendipitous time, my friend, at this point, England had just broken off from the church of Rome, which could have sparked like an entire whole ass war. But because of that, he no longer had to ask for the Pope's permission. So he mm. just drove over to the French king and was like, yo, can I get married and divorce this other guy? And he was like, yep, sure, go ahead. So they did that instead. Okay. And over the course, yeah, over the course of when he met Anne to when they were actually allowed to be declared lovers was seven years. Jeez. So she like waited. Like he was courting her for a minute. He was wow. fighting to get a divorce. Seven years she waited for him. Wow. Yeah. Long con. Long con. Right? Yeah. So as soon as he asked the king's permission and he said yes, the other French king's permission, Catherine, Queen Cat, current wife and queen, was banished from Henry's castle and all of her rooms and clothes were all given to Anne. Which made oh. me ponder on a fun question, like, Jazz, what wife of a celebrity's life, including wardrobe and house, would you want to inherit? <laughs> wardrobe and house. I feel like I'm going to say Blake Lively. Oh, yeah? Because I also want to fuck Ryan. I just want to see if it's good or not. Mm. I feel like he talks a big talk and he's like America's sweetheart, but I want to know if he can fuck. I don't and know she's if got I great have clothes. anybody. You're kind of your own fashion icon, so I don't blame you. I'm just like, whose partner would I want to be around? <laughs> that's the that's the most. That's the your priorities are a lot straighter than mine. Okay, <laughs> okay, she is not married, but oh? I would with Meg the Stallion and her <gasps> boyfriend party. Done. A fine Done. ass man. Perfect. Call. Yes. And that wardrobe. And she probably mm. had a nice house. Yes. That's perfect. Nailed it. I'll take it. Okay. So uh after seven years to play that game, I wonder too, Whoa. like, is she actually in love with him at this point, or was she really just like holding out for the well, ultimate dream? Do you think that they were during that seven years like basically Yes, Acting I think secretly. Yeah, boyfriend. Everything. Girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. Seven years is still a long time though for a bitch that was like, I'm not going to be your hoe. That's such a long time. Wait, how long have you <sighs> been dating your boyfriend? Oh my god, we just celebrated four years on Sunday. What about you? Me and Kate will be three years. A minute in, in March. Yeah. Oh, and doesn't it feel like forever? Like seven years sounds like so long. <laughs> that sounds forever. Long. With me and Kate, yeah. I feel like we just started dating like last week. Oh, I love that. I know it's Keep wild. Keep that moment alive. I love that for you. Yeah. That's healthy. Good. <laughs> love how. Okay, so <laughs> back to our girl. Okay, so Queen Cat gets kicked out of the castle, right? No but clothes. She, no clothes <laughs> she has the support of the public still because the public is kind of like that's our queen i don't mm -hmm. know who this new young hoe is but like mm -hmm. queen cats are bitch yeah. so much so that when Anne would try to go out into the town like she would try to go out for dinner she would almost get kidnapped or beat up by <sighs> mobs of angry women <laughs> wow they were like, like they not up in were here. loyal. No. Stay behind closed doors, bitch. Exactly. Wow. So in 1533, finally, Anne was crowned queen at a ceremony in Westminster Abbey where our Princess Meghan got married, followed by this big banquet where 
she got this extra special, super shiny crown because it turned out she was already pregnant <sighs> and all the royal uh, philosophers and astrologers called it out and they were like, she's pregnant with a boy give her this special crown on their wedding day. And it was like a really big deal. Wow. Okay. Apparently. Yeah. But uh-oh, later in 1535, Anne gave birth to that baby and it was a girl. And this was a huge blow to them as they were so sure and predicted with this new wife, new life, they were going to have a boy and all the astrologers and physicians and philosophers were like, how could we have possibly been wrong? And it was a quote, massive disappointment. Imagine being pregnant. No. Okay. <laughs> imagine being pregnant. Now mm. lay on your back and imagine mm. giving birth. No. To a child back mm. then where there was not many drugs nope. or sterilization. Oh, yikes. And no TV or podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> And now, Especially. <laughs> imagine pushing that no. thing out of you. No. And then having no. the fear and anxiety because this baby is a girl. I want you to hold on to that anger. It's going to come back in a big way. But okay. just hold okay. on to that. Hold on to that. I, I don't want to forget this because that was beautiful. <laughs> Okay. I'm mad. So, so yes. I'm mad. I'm mad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, very big disappointment, right? At this point, though, something very interesting happens. There okay. start to come out these portraits and paintings of King Henry, and people start to notice that he has a giant bulge. Like, every painting of him He's got a massive schlong, like huge okay. cock. There's like ribbons tied around it and shit. And people start to look at it and are like, is that supposed to be his penis? Because isn't that a little bit overcompensation? Like mm -hmm. people are like, the portrait does not match the original. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. Is he trying to overcompensate? And people start to wonder at this point, is it really the women or maybe is it something wrong with his dingling? I wonder. And even to this day, these portraits are like very protected and guarded because really? of like these massive cock drawings. Yeah. Wow. So people start to get suspicious. And they're like, well, he's the man. We better just sweep it under the rug. He's the king. He could have us beheaded. But let's just gossip about it and not really say anything. Cool. So in the next year, Anne apparently becomes pregnant again but unfortunately has a miscarriage and mm. at this point henry starts to apparently start discussing divorce with some of his closest confidants which i'm like oh this motherfucker but yeah. he's like i can't divorce her because what are the rules do i have to get back with my ex i don't want her i know she can't give me a sign so he's like i can't divorce her yet i'm gonna just kind of like ride this one out and okay. there was also rumors of an argued, and I think it's called like a pseudo, pseudo something, where basically women back in the 1600s, this would happen all the time, where they would want to be pregnant so bad that their bodies would actually give all the symptoms of pregnancy, including bloating wow. of the stomach and stopping the wow. period, but then there would never be a baby. So that some people wild. think that is the power of the human mind, if mm -hmm. I've ever heard of it. But Apparently, this was a huge problem, and some people said that that might have even been what they thought Anne was experiencing as a miscarriage. Mm, okay. But okay. They, Henry and Anne finally reconciled when Anne became pregnant for the third slash maybe second time. Okay. So, we got a reminder about King Henry here. He's still being a huge asshole because he's made all these enemies with the Catholic Church and all these Roman soldiers and things. And he's like, I need to make this law to protect myself and my family. So he created what was called the law of succession, which meant that for any of the children that King Henry had, except for any of them that he had with cat queen, king, queen cat, because they were divorced. So starting with queen Anne, any of the children they had would stay in the lineage to be Royal. 
So oh, okay. the family members had to become the next king or queen. Because remember, the only way he was allowed to become king, he wasn't just given the throne because his brother died. He literally had to marry his widow. Yeah. So he was like, fuck this. I'm going to just make a law that like protects me and the family. Mm-hmm. Lineage. That's all I care about. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, yeah. And anyone who doesn't accept this new law out loud that says like, OK, yeah, I'm good with that. We're going to execute you. <laughs> and not only did they execute anyone who opposed, but they cut up their whole bodies, took out their hearts and dragged them across the town square like psychopathic behavior. Jeez. <laughs> Because they were like, maybe that's problematic that you're going to keep one family in power for like the rest of reign and rule and eternity. And he was like, I'm going to cut your fucking heart out. Shut up. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like Ooh. pure villain. Right. Yeah. So now we're two and a half years into their marriage with Anne pregnant again. Old boy Henry just can't mm. fucking help himself. He just can't seem to keep his grimy paws off these mistresses. And he begins to court one of Anne's best friends That's and maid of honor at their wedding, a woman named Jane Seymour. Fucking Jane. And Wait, that he was so enamored by too. her. Yeah, exactly. You're going to know. You're going to hear all these alarm bells ringing. Like, wait a minute. Didn't I read about that in yeah. history class? <laughs> He loved her so much, he gave her a locket containing a portrait of himself inside of it. And when Anne found out about this, she ripped the locket off of Jane's neck with so much force that they both bled. So her fingers bled and Jane's neck bled. Oh, no. I mean. She was like, absolutely not. Rightfully so. That was your friend. And that's your husband. That's a double whammy. And I think. Also, Anne's so scared. She's pregnant. She's like, mm-hmm. back off, bitch. Mm-hmm. Let me have this. So later that month, the king was unhorsed in a tournament and knocked oh. unconscious for two hours. Okay. And this was a huge moment in history because this is what they think was the cause of King Henry VIII's violent behavior and change in personality like if you ask me he was kind of already an asshole 100 percent. apparently after this injury he became more violent more aggressive more dangerous and five days after his head injury Anne has the miscarriage that they equate to the stress of him unconscious and then waking up as this like completely different like ravaged angry man of course yeah and here's the kicker she was so far along in her pregnancy that when she actually passed the miscarriage they could tell Mm. that it was a boy would have been his first boy damn if he would have just stayed on the fucking horse Mm -hmm. i feel like everything's his fault yeah i blame him so app- yeah, same. <laughs> apparently what made Anne different from like all the other women in King Henry's life that they would often say is that she didn't give a fuck about this head injury or his violent behavior. She rose to the occasion and would become just as violent and go tit for tat against him and like argue and scream into the night and was like really standing up for herself. And no one had ever seen this behavior from a queen and People would like talk about it like, oh, okay. she's not going quietly. She's okay. like, I fucking waited seven years for you, bitch. I'm not going to bow out now. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I wouldn't expect anything less from our girl. At this point, she's a, we are in this game. We are too mm-hmm. far, mm-hmm. deep, 100%. But then her BFF truly betrays her. And Anne walked in on Jane sitting quote unquote sitting on henry's lap i think she caught him fucking and Uh. flew into an absolute rage and at this point i'm like you saw it with your sister you saw it with the Mm ex-wife once a cheater always a cheater do you have do you believe that though any empathy no i've cheated before and i haven't cheated since okay love that (laughs) do you believe that no 
and same. Okay, good. <laughs> I think, okay, good. People can change. Yes. But at this point, do you, do you feel any empathy for Anne? No. Because I'm struggling. No. I'm struggling. I, I don't. I don't believe in the saying, once a cheater, always a cheater. I do believe in the saying, whatever starts in chaos, ends in chaos. And Ooh, so, I've never heard that. Oh, really? Yeah, I love it. Oh, my gosh, yes. So the fact that it was this song and a dance for them to be together, of course, however, this is ending was not going to be smooth. It's giving very Chloe and Tristan for mm-hmm. me. Oh, I'm kind of like, Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> And poor Queen Cat is like Jordan or something. Someone who owes, gets fucking deserves an apology. <laughs> the truth. Okay. So at this point, Anne is like crazy fucking pissed. King Henry is like, I'm fucking Jane. I can't like, this is what it is. And after two mi- miscarriages, Henry declared, I know what I'm going to do. I used religion to get divorced from Kat and a little bit of beheadings to say, God clearly didn't want me in this marriage. He didn't give me a son. I'm going to say the same thing about Anne because that's how I got Mm. out of it last time. So he starts declaring that Anne had seduced, decepted, and put spells on him because she was a hoe, miscarried his son on purpose, and that was not queen behavior. Jeez. (laughs) He turned on her real quick. I feel like this man has to be a Scorpio or <laughs> maybe a Cancer. Very, so Scorpio, yeah. Cancer rising vibes. Right, right, right. Yeah. And honestly, because it was only three short years that Anne was queen, no one really liked her to begin with. And they were kind of like, yeah, just fuck this chick, which made her we very susceptible. <laughs> yeah. They made her very susceptible to gossip, which will be important in a moment. Okay. So apparently after he started saying all this shit about Anne, Jane Seymour moves into the royal quarters very quickly. And Henry's like, fuck Anne and her witchy hoe pussy. I'm just going to keep fucking your BFF. Mm -hmm. So it's important to remember that she was susceptible to gossip and not liked because this scandalous rumor started to spread that Anne was sleeping with people closest to the king because like saying she was witchy and couldn't produce a son Mm -hmm. didn't really work for queen. Mm And he had to like behead a bunch of people and shit. And they were like, we need something spicier. Mm -hmm. So apparently this rumor went around that Anne was fucking his oldest, most trusted friend. And this guy's job literally was that he wiped the king's ass. That's his closest person is his life was his ass wiper. Ass wiper. (laughs) And these rumors hit so hard that, like, even historians don't know if it's true or not. Like, wow. it's so convoluted because if it is true, does that mean, like, she never really loved him? She was doing this for power. Does it mean that any of the children or miscarriages weren't his? Yeah. Or was this all a plot to accuse Anne of treason against the king that, like, he could have started himself? I think it's, I think it's the second one. You think it was the king that was like, we got to get juicier. Absolutely. So, I mean, right. Or may I present a third option that potentially we can even go as far to say that Queen Anne was the first queen to have her own side piece. Oh. Because remember, this was only a thing men could do. And our girl Anne did not play by the book. That's the truth. So all... All of these theories are argued. That's right? wild. Uh, and a fun fact here is that uh, a gossiper was actually an official job in the court, not only to like protect the king and his family, but also for entertainment. <laughs> wow. I know. So they were doing and TMZ I- back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> TMZ IRL. Oh, truly. It was. Yes. So either way, we know that it never works out for women in these times in politics because never. Henry was not just going to wait around for like a trial or to hear her out at this point. So these rumors are literally going on. And at this point, once Jane's moved in and never gets to see her husband again, she was completely separated from him, put in a tower. She never got to speak her truth or plead her own case. Um, so Henry accused Anne of uh, and tried her for adultery, stating that she had an affair with 
three different men, one of them literally his bestie and ass wiper, and literally chopped his own best friend's head off. Ah. So even if it wasn't true, he killed his oh. ass wiper. So one day some court homies come to the castle apartment and that's where she's being kept and they read out all these charges against her, including a random one that she made out with her brother, which is weird, but that <laughs> will come back later. And her trial took place in front of 2,000 people. Wow. And one of the jurors was her uncle from the beginning. Because remember when I told you she spoke so nasty to him, it was like talking like oh, a dog? Oh, no. Payback. Right? Uh, so we know that wasn't going to end well. Damn Anyways, it. the the charges literally called her a hoe, said she was guilty of seducing men, which, like, relatable, and conned the king. But the king was guilty of nothing with Jane because he couldn't be responsible for what his wife was, who was insatiable, which then in turn kind of turned on King Henry because these documents were read out loud in court in front of the 2,000 townspeople. Uh -huh. And people were like, wait, does that mean the king can't fuck? Because right. he can't, like, keep up. Plus, remember all these porches of his, like, bloated cock? Like, yeah. People were real suspicious. Sometimes I had enough point. here. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, she was unanimously found guilty and sentenced to death. And oh. they charged her with supposedly making out with her brother. So they beheaded her brother two days before her beheading. Uh. So it was like, they wanted to cut out the brother and her. They didn't want any leftover pieces. Damn. They were like, just get this whole family out. So after her sentencing, she got to speak to the court and she was like, first of all, I'm innocent. I've always been loyal, but I was mean to him. That part is true. And she <laughs> didn't apologize for that, which is epic and iconic. I love for the that. fact that she was basically like, no, you're right. I was mean. Fuck him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at this point, I'm like, OK, was she faking it the whole time or was she just saying that as kind of like. I've fallen in, out of love with him. But either way, she did admit to the being mean part. And mm -hmm. apparently that touched Henry that she like admitted to that. <laughs> and he he ordered a what's called dignified beheading, which meant it wasn't done in front of the townspeople. And he had hired an expert swordsman from France to come in and do it so that it went quicker and smoother, like chopping her head off. Like, you're welcome. Honestly, eat my ass. Like, uh, <laughs> I, at this point, at this point, don't. If it was that easy for someone to travel to France, just let, even just let me, like, stay in a tower and be alive. Yes. Like, like why do you need to kill me? Right. I guess it's because he legally would still be married to her and he wasn't able to divorce her. So he had to kill her. Yeah. So. Her last words were apparently super nice about the king, which I think was kind of like a play to get people to feel bad for her. Like, oh, maybe she wasn't so bad after all. I don't mm -hmm. think she actually meant any of it. Mm -hmm. So one strike of the sword, she's dead as fuck. This I thought was weird. They took her head, boiled it, tarred it, put it on a spike on the London Bridge, but then kept her body in a church where the body was buried. Boiled I, it? That's that's is that exactly some, what I thought. Is that some murder shit I haven't heard yet? I wonder it no, I have no explanation. <laughs> oh. Okay. And only eleven days after Anne's execution, King Ole Henry married her BFF Jane. And Jane did give birth to a son eventually, named Edward. But sorry, Jane, Henry ended up having four more wives after her. Yes. But even though Jane did give him a son, he died six years into his reign, which meant full circle. We finally end on a happy note that because of the law King Henry himself made about succession mm -hmm. Anne's daughter, Elizabeth, then became queen and ruled for 45 fucking oh, years. I love it. And that is the story of yes. this week's host throughout history Ooh. and Bolin. I love it. If it had to end in a way, I'm here for it. Of his own doing, you know? He finally gets the son. He's like, at least I have a son that'll take over. Nope, he did. Nope. 
and your ex wife, your ex ex wife that you killed daughter then is now mm-hmm. Queen Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. And ruled for 45 years. So fuck you. Wow. That's I wild. Know. That's wild. And the funny thing, the funny, it's not funny, it's not. The crazy thing is he had a, a daughter with his first wife, Queen Cat. Right. But after they divorced, she became a bastard. And yeah. And so she wasn't allowed yeah. to be the queen. <gasps> so oh, I like I wanna... to think that maybe Elizabeth became friends with her and they like. I was going to say, I want to hear friends. her story. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll do that next time. The queen but Jazz, that should I've kept been. you. The queen that should have been. I've kept you so long. This is an extra long one, but I, I love having you here, and we'll keep you on as long as you'll ever have us. And yes. tell, tell the folks where to find you. You can find me on Instagram at Jasmine J. That's also my Twitter, TikTok, TikTok. as my TikTok. I love your TikTok. I love just seeing you pop up on my feed. I love your TikToks. Me? Yes. I I put no thought into them. Oh my gosh. And you can tell because like, it's actually you just like being Being. the person that I know. Same with you. I love it. Look at us. I'm happy for us. Despite the times we are in, (laughs) I always am supporting and cheering for you on the outside. Same. (laughs) <laughs> oh, all right, love. Well, Coffee Dots, that was it for this week. Go follow Jasmine. Stay tuned next episode. Maybe we'll we'll end up doing Queen Elizabeth or Queen Bastard. Yes. Queen that will. And we will see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.